with yesterday so we got this market here now i did uh, take a couple of notes um 1515 london so 1515 london i bought a 408 call um and these are approximates guys 75 cents sorry i sold a 408 call 75 cents and I took, at the same time, I sold the 407 put for 78 cents. Okay, so I sold the 408 calls for 75 cents and a four, the 407 puts for 78 cents. And then I did a few more trades at uh, at 1530 uh, i did another uh, goosey gander at it i did another trade on the 408 calls and i got uh, 67 cents and i did the 406 puts and i got 45 cents And then at 1700 hours, I took the 406, I sold some more 406 puts, and I got 50 cents. And the good thing about those trades was that uh, you could probably already see every single one of them, every single one of them finished it out of the money yeah every single one of them finished out of the money and i sold every single one of them so when you add up all those numbers it's actually a fairly decent profit right three dollars plus a bit of change so three dollars per per position you know per total position that i had on during that uh, during that day which is a pretty good outcome right so if you've got 100, 100 uh, shares effectively, then you're obviously making a pretty good profit, $300. And so when you think about it, you see there's a, a good amount of money on this. I mean, if you take 10 positions on this, you're looking at a $3,000 income that day, $3,000. So when we start breaking down what I actually did, obviously I'm using the price of volatility to figure out uh, what the trade is. You'll see that I'm not taking a, well, does anybody know what it is? What does anybody know what the trade is called? First of all, obviously there's a leg into it. It's not uh, the same, but there's a leg into it. Well, there's a strangle, isn't there? There's a strangle. A straddle happens at the same price and a strangle happens at different prices, yeah? So we've obviously got a, you know, what the uh, option market calls a strangle. Different strike prices, same, basically the same, the same contract, but uh, same duration contracts. So it's not a calendar or any sort. You know, we don't have any diagonals or anything going on. It's not a credit spread, debit spread. It's simply selling options. It's just premium accumulation. It's premium taking, right? So it's a, it's a short. Okay, it's not a long position, it's a short. So it's not a volatility expansion, it's a short sell. So it's a short sell strangle. And this is a premium collection strategy. This is a a trade that benefits from a mean reversion. So obviously you've got to be careful when the market starts expanding. So what happened to me at the beginning of this trade um, was that I started with a, a 408 call. So this was my original trade here at quarter past 15. So quarter past 15, I looked at this market and I saw that this was tearing off to the sell side. So obviously I was looking at the fact that the market was tearing off to the sell side, the volatilities looked kind of bearish, yes. 
So because of that, I thought to myself, well, four or eight calls, yep, let's do some selling into this area here. Does that make sense? So we sold the four or eight calls. I also, I also sold the four or seven puts because I looked at the total volatility and the total volatility was kind of low, right? The total volatility, whilst the market might be selling off, the total volatility is actually declining on this day. And I'm thinking to myself, rotational day, perhaps, perhaps I might be under pressure, but I can always hedge at 407s if the price breaks south. And that gives you the time to do it. Remember a means and Paul's exercise? Well, we did that exercise on a straddle, which meant they didn't have a space of time to make the decision, right? They had to make a decision as soon as it crossed that straddle strike. Make sense? So if I was to do a straddle strike at 408, as soon as it crosses 408, I'm, I better get into that short sell to hedge out my put option position. But obviously because I've went for a strangle here and I took a 407 strangle on this, 407s is into this price area here. You can see it just in here. So I sold that 407 put option, okay? So we sold the 407 puts into that area. Now, obviously that means that I, if I want to make sure I'm not gonna lose money, I've got to sell here on the short stock. Now, assuming that I'm not making any money on the short stock position, that's just simply a sell for every position I've got in here, I'm selling the same delta on this position here. If the price doubles back against this, obviously I'm gonna close out that position and make a new decision at that point. Now what happened was at half past, I then recognized of course that that was starting to punch a hole through the bottom edges here. So I sold some more 408 calls and obviously the 408 call had dropped from 75 cents to 67 cents. So obviously I was, I was getting into that trade again. I was doing some more business at 408 calls, 408, 67 cents this time. And this time I went for the 406 puts, the 406 puts. So I thought I'd give myself a little bit of wiggle room on this one. So I came in here and sold the 406s at half faster. Yeah. <clears throat> so I've now collected, I've now collected 75 cents, 78 cents, 67 cents and 45 cents. So obviously I could use them as a stop if I didn't want to hedge out positions. I could use that as a dollar stop or a dollar 50 stop or in this case, two dollars of 50 stop, right? But obviously if I use this as a stop, then I might not make any money on this trade and I'll end up losing money with commissions, right? So it's up to you how you play this. But obviously there's now a bracket with the price trades above the bracket, I'll make money. And if the price trades below the bracket, I'll make even more money. Well, the good news was the, the price finished the day between, the, between the, the highest put and between the lowest call. So every single one of those options expired worthless. Every single one of them. So obviously what happened here at 1700 hours, which obviously I've 1700 hours in here, this is now looking really good. So I decided to go again and for another 406 put. Cost me 50 cents, or didn't cost me 50 cents. I, I took 50 cents in on that put. Uh, thought I was under a little bit of pressure here, but remember, I don't have to do anything until it trades down here. I don't have to sell this short until it trades here if I wanted to hedge that position. Never have to hedge the position because when it comes into this area, it starts to diverge off this 407 here, this uh, 406 area. That was the volatility expansion that the dealers had told me that the price would not go through. Remember that conversation? I did give you a shout about it yesterday in the classroom. I says, this is the volatility expansion price that the dealers have in mind that this price is not trading through. We were able to recognize that information in real time. We we're able to recognize that information as it develops. And we were able to take a play against that information itself. We were able to monetize that information. 
because we gave this price out. I think we shouted 405.80 yesterday. Might, you might recall it. So obviously, when I seen the price coming back into 405.80s in here, the value divergence was creeping in. You could have sold a lot of 406 puts at 1800 hours at that stage, but we were obviously just starting to wind down the classroom to a close. So obviously, I just I didn't get a chance to sell those puts. And uh, obviously, if I did sell these puts at 406, uh, 405 80s, uh, 406s, if I sold the 406 stri six, uh, strike, I could probably have got a good premium for that trade. But obviously, you can see what happened. The price traded in here at 407.60s at the close. Every single option, all the call options, which were 408 calls, they expired worthless. The 406 puts, they expired worthless. The 407 puts, they expired worthless. And basically, I got to keep all of the premium of the entire move. Every single last cent was now premium from the entire move was now kept. So this is one of the advantages, of course, of doing strangles. You don't get as much premium, but you get uh, a bigger range to make a decision in. So in other words, if you're not great at hedging, if you kind of want to make sure that you're going to hedge out properly, then of course, this is a better strategy. Give up some premium to buy yourself a little bit of time. Does that make sense, Henrik? For anybody that's ever traded options, everybody, everybody, anybody that's ever traded options will kind of have this as a basic, uh, their basic idea is that strangles are very good trades if you want to just give yourself a bit of space to consider whether there's any value coming in. So when it comes to that idea, think about your gold markets. If you're thinking of a probability trade at the moment, if I was to look at gold, obviously these one standard deviation areas would be great places to build a, build a strangle round, right? Would you agree with that, Paul? You're a bit of a gold bug. So if I was to build a strangle around these areas here and I put my strangle either just outside the box or on the box, I would run a 220 strangle so I would sell a 220 put option on gold, and I would sell a 245 call option on gold. And because of the probability that the dealers are telling me, then obviously the probability is that I've got a, a good 70% probability on that trade before I even start, that that money is going to be entirely mine to keep. 70% probability before I even start the day. Now, obviously, as I start to increase my probabilities, I start to decrease my premiums. The bigger the probability I want, the less money they're willing to give me. It's like backing a horse when it's coming up to the line at 1.01 your money, right? So you're getting $1 for every $100 of risk. I mean, it's going to win unless it falls over at the line and it doesn't quite make it through the line. But it's almost a dead cert. You're going to make a dollar from that trade. It's an incredibly high probability, but you're not going to make very much based on the incredible high volatility, the incredibly high probability. So there's always a balance. I mean, at some stage, like every other trade you do, there's a balance between probabilities and making some significant gains. The higher the probability, the less gain you will nearly always expect to make. That's just reasonable, isn't it? So it's a, a trade-off. If I buy a bottom edge, I've got a low probability trade. If I buy a momentum move higher, I've got a high probability trade that won't make as much money as the guys that bought the bottom edge, but they took on a lot more risk trying to buy the bottom edge, didn't they? So we can recognize these elements. So when it comes into today's open, guys, give it for 15 minutes or so, give it 15, 30 minutes or so, and then and then look at what straddle you would take. Type it in the box if you've got any time. Look at spy, uh, your uh, look at the spy on bar charts. Do a pricing for a straddle that you're willing to take, and just type it in the box and see how you would have performed with that as a little background exercise to your day. As a little background exercise on the spy, do a straddle. Do a well, do a straddle or a strangle, but uh, preferably a strangle, so you get a basic idea of the difference between the two, you're going to get a lot less premium, but you're not going to have to hedge uh, for a little bit of time. And then we'll watch to see how that strangles unfolded coming into the classroom session. Just as an exercise, guys. All good?
No, all good. Now, obviously, you know, when you see this makes three dollars, the original trade was a dollar fifty. Dollar fifty and a four hundred dollar product is pretty small percentage, uh, but you get the basic idea that it's still a reasonable percentage. If you if that's the only trade you took. Now we were under pressure on that trade at the beginning because obviously the price went through the 407s. So obviously you had to sell off that 407 level if you wanted to hedge out that 407 exposure. But that comes back to that classroom exercise about uh, we did about selling premiums and then trying to lock in the dealer's premium. So you're basically trading the exact same way as a market maker in these positions, aren't you? You know, you're short the option going into the highs, you're short the option going into the lows, and you're trying to manage those short option positions depending upon how slippy or sticky the market appears to be in those areas. So it's a great exercise, guys. So we'll do that exercise this afternoon for anybody that's interested in it. If you're not interested in it, then you can just crack on, as you always do anyway, regardless. So, uh, But uh, certainly, it's a little bit of a knowledge exercise for people who simply want to try and get their head around this. So obviously, like uh, we talked about,